Pearl of the Orient, Queen of the Beaches, Land of Churches and Temples are some of the sobriquet used for Goa, the smallest Indian state in terms of geographical size. The town of Chandor is one of the earliest known capitals of Goa. It served as the capital of the Kadamba dynasty till 1327 AD before it fell to subsequent dynasties including the Vijayanagara Empire, Adil Shahi dynasty and eventually the Portuguese. Chandor has one of Goa's oldest colonial mansions. The east wing houses the Pereira Braganza family. The west wing is home to Menezes Braganza family. The interiors of the 17th century mansion have been preserved well enough to give a first-hand glimpse into the lives of Goan aristocracy. during the portuguese rule one of the ancestors of the family was afs braganza pereira who represented goa under the portuguese government as vice consul general to spain He was known to be close to the then king of Portugal who had gifted him rosewood chairs bearing his initials. The magnificent ballroom boasts of chandeliers from Belgium and floral pattern ceiling. Some of the rare and prized possessions of the mansion include a Philips radio from the 1940s, an 18th century commode, and exquisite porcelain from Macau, which was then a Portuguese colony. The mansion has an in-house baroque style chapel. It houses a diamond crusted fingernail of Saint Francis Xavier, only the second place after Basilica de Bom Jesus in Old Goa to house a relic of Saint Francis Xavier. Another eminent occupant of this mansion was Louis de Menezes Braganza, a renowned Goan journalist and one of the few anti-colonial activists from the aristocracy. This mansion serves as the residence of the present generation of the Braganzas with Mrs. Audria Braganza being the matriarch of the Pereira side of the house. The Portuguese took control of Goa after defeating the local Bijapur Sultan Yusuf Adil Shah in 
Thus began the dawn of the Portuguese colonial rule that would go on to last for four and a half centuries. They established their first capital in what is now called Velha Goa, Portuguese for Old Goa. Lying on the banks of River Mandovi, this site was the erstwhile capital of the Adil Shahi dynasty. Remnants of Adil Shah's palace could still be seen in the vicinity. The infamous Goa Inquisition began here in 1560 on the request of St. Francis Xavier, a Spanish missionary who is known to have co-founded the Jesuits order. The primary motive was to curb the libertine ways of the Portuguese settlers and convert the local Goan population. This led to banning of all local ceremonies, destruction of local places of worship and putting to trial all those who refused to cooperate. They were often met with violent methods of punishment and executions. Over the next 200 years, about 1600 trials were held and thousands killed. The Inquisition was dissolved only in 1812. Old Goa is known for its magnificent churches constructed during the Portuguese rule. The oldest church here is the Chapel of St. Catherine, which was built by Alfonso de Albuquerque in 1510 after defeating Adil Shah in honor of St. Catherine of Alexandria, the saint who was martyred at the hands of the Roman Emperor Maxentius. The Catherine's wheel of torture used during her execution, which is often used as a representative element for St. Catherine, can be seen here. Next to the chapel, is the church dedicated to St. Francis of Assisi, not to be confused with St. Francis Xavier of the Goa Inquisition fame. This church was established by Portuguese friars of the Franciscan order in 1517. The richly ornamented interiors of the church is typically Baroque. Some of the elements seem to have a subtle influence of both Hindu and Islamic architecture. The main altar has a statue of Our Lady of Miracles brought from Sri Lanka at the bottom and those of St. Francis of Assisi and Jesus Christ at the top. Adjoining the St. Francis of Assisi Church is the Say Cathedral, one of the largest in Asia. This cathedral was built by Alfonso de Albuquerque in 1510 to commemorate the Portuguese victory over Adil Shah and his Ottoman allies. As the day of the battle coincided with the feast of St. Catherine, the cathedral was dedicated to the saint. The tower of the cathedral houses a large bell known as the Golden Bell which rings at 12 pm every day and has a very rich tone. The cathedral, an example of Portuguese Manulin architecture, has multiple chapels inside it.
The main altar depicts the life and martyrdom of Saint Catherine. The Shea Cathedral also houses a baptismal font made in 1532, believed to be used by St. Francis Xavier to baptize several local Goan converts. The St. Cajetan Church was completed in 1661 and was constructed by Italian priests of Theatine order. The church dedicated to St. Cajetan, the co-founder of the Theatine Order, is considered to have been modelled on the St. Peter's Basilica of Vatican City. The dome of the church is in the form of a Greek cross and has Latin inscriptions from the Gospel of Matthew on the inside. Near to the St. Cajetan Church, lies a prominent structure, the Viceroy's Ark, constructed by Francisco da Gama in memory of his great-grandfather Vasco da Gama. This archway, situated on the banks of River Mandovi, served as one of the major entrances to the old city. The archway has statues of Vasco da Gama and St. Catherine in either of its two sides. The most popular of all churches of Old Goa is the Basilica de Bom Jesus or Basilica of Good Jesus when translated in English. Consecrated in 1605, this is a major pilgrimage center for Christians around the world for it houses the incorruptible mortal remains of St. Francis Xavier. St. Francis Xavier died in the Chinese island of Sankian, which was once a Portuguese base in 1552. The body was first taken to Portuguese Malacca and later shipped to Goa. The body is displayed for public viewing every 10 years. The mausoleum was designed by the 17th century Florentine sculptor Giovanni Battista Foggini. For some strange reason, the church was never able to hold the Holy Cross on top as every time it was installed it gave away. It was eventually decided to place it separately where it still stands today. The Church of St. Augustine is a ruined church complex located in Old Goa. The church was completed in 1602. It was built on top of Monte Santo, which is a holy hill, by Augustinian friars who landed in Goa in 1587. The church was abandoned in 1835 after the Portuguese government of Goa began evicting many religious orders in Goa under its new repressive policies. The subsequent neglect caused the vault of the church to collapse in 1842. Malaria and cholera epidemics ravaged the city of Velia Goa in the 17th century. The population of the city, which stood at about 200,000 in 1543, came down to just about 1500 in 1775, as many perished in the epidemic. This led the Portuguese to abandon the city and shift their capital to a new location, which they called Nova Goa or New Goa, the city which later came to be known as Panjim or Panaji.
Sarro foti ki romu non, oshe ma kati sala. Chedwa ja moga na porom, zaite pauti posala. Anik ma ka mug na ka munom, ugich ata mosala. Bel muzo sarro mugu to kuruk sukne posala. Magi te cantar cuta cucur cucucu cucur cucucu cucur cucucu Lying on the banks of river Mandovi the city of Panaji is bound by two creeks Orem Creek and Santa Ines Creek Panaji or Panjim, which serves as the capital of Goa to this day, a vibrant town known for its casinos, river cruises, and promenades, is also rich in history. This is the old quarter of the city, which is known as Fountain Hash or Barrow Das Fountain Hash. Modelled on Lisbon's Barrow Alto, this quarter bears resemblance to a typical Mediterranean town. Flanked by the hills of Altinho, this region was named after a spring at the foot of the hills, which began to sprout around 1770. The town was established in 18th century by a wealthy Goan expatriate Antonio Joao de Sequeira who had made a fortune in Portuguese Mozambique. This area is particularly known for its street flanked by colorful houses with red tile roofs and balconies with intricate railings. The buildings are also known for its azulejo name plates in blue and white, a Portuguese and Spanish ceramic tile work. The colors of the building are based on an old Portuguese rule. by which only the church could be colored in white signifying the purity of virgin mary also as per another colonial rule it was mandatory to paint the houses after every monsoon These rules are followed by the residents to this day ensuring that buildings retain the fresh colors each year. Houses with roosters or statues of soldiers typically belong to the aristocracy.
Another striking feature of these houses, dating back to well over 200 years, are the windows made of translucent mother of pearl shells, allowing sunlight to pass through it while ensuring privacy. The region of South Thom in Fronten has is named after the South Thom Chapel or the St. Thomas Chapel in English. This chapel is located in the Tobacco Square, which is named so because of the present General Post Office building was once a depot for trading tobacco. Adjacent to the post office building is Kesa Moeda or the Mint House. This building functioned as a mint for Portuguese coins from 1845 to 1869. It was later converted into a residential building and was purchased by General Dr. Miguel Dias in 1904. General Dias, an army physician, was the only Goan to be designated as a general by the Portuguese. The descendants of General Dias continue to live in this house. The square between the post office, mint house and South Home Chapel once housed the infamous town pillory. This was the site of the public execution of the participants of the Pinto Revolt, an anti-colonial uprising led by three priests from the village of Candolim. Most of the roads, shops and neighborhoods still retain the Portuguese names. A good example is the nearby Rua de 31st Janeiro Street, which translates to 31st January Road in English. This street is named after a revolutionary movement to bring Republican regime in the town Porto in Portugal. There happens to be a street with the same name in Porto as well. On the street is the iconic Hospedaria Venete restaurant. This 1954 eatery is housed in a building that is over 200 years old. This used to be a hostel for hippies during the 1960s and 70s. The restaurant has retained the graffiti drawn by the hippies from the old days. The street also has an iconic bakery from the 1930s that serves traditional Goan confectionaries including the famous Bebinka. Beyond the little fountain after which the region is named are the lush green hills of Altinho, where the administrators and the cream of the Portuguese society stayed. There exists a flight of stairs to climb up the hill. This climb culminates in the famous Maruti temple dedicated to Lord Hanuman.
This temple was built in the 1920s and offers a scenic view of Panjim town. Goa remained a Portuguese territory till 1961, a good 14 years after the rest of India had gained independence from the British Empire. A series of national movements led to the eventual liberation of Goa by armed action of the Indian Army, codenamed Operation Vijay. The surrender of Portuguese troops took place at this very site in Altinho. Goa managed to retain its core cultural elements even after four centuries of Portuguese rule. Konkani is still the most common language and much of Goa's culinary practices remain unchanged. Nevertheless, the colonial rule did have its influences on Goan way of life in many ways. Romi Konkani or the Konkani in the Roman script is still followed by many. A lot of Portuguese phrases and words too have been adopted into the local language. Besides, some of the popular Goan dishes like the Vindalus and the Jakutis have evident Portuguese elements. Another major colonial influences can be seen in Goa's thriving western music scene that includes the Portuguese genre of fado with heavy use of drums, guitar and trumpets the Goan jazz scene of the 60s and 70s still has a massive following. Some of the big names include Lorna Quadero, Chris Perry and Antoinette Mendes. Most of Mumbai's jazz clubs in the 60s used to be graced by Goan musicians of the day. Goa has the highest per capita income amongst all the Indian states. Tourism thrives here thanks to its scenic beaches, verdant landscapes and of course its vibrant nightlife. While a visit to Goa makes us appreciate and enjoy the fun, frolic and revelry that Goa is known for today, with a bit of general observation coupled with some reading and pep talk with some old time locals, one could manage to unearth conspicuous yet forgotten gems of Goa's rich past. Let me
Pity, 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 mogayam to akal. 